Hi everyone, Dylan Gowan here. Welcome back to another installment of Overkill Reviews, Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. And welcome back to the Banger Hanger. Today, I'm going to review one of the most anticipated albums within progressive metal this year. It's the ninth studio album by Meshuggah called Immutable, out today through Atomic Fire. Meshuggah are one of the most influential bands on the planet when it comes to metal. Since forming in 1987, the Swedish prog giants have developed a technically complex and heavy rhythmic sound that has influenced the entire metal subgenre. Well, not subgenre, well, the, just the entire genre of heavy metal. It's funny, every single time I speak to somebody who isn't a metalhead, they always seem to have a great amount of respect for Meshuggah. And that's because a lot of their just sound and a lot of their songs are just very musically challenging and it's interesting and just draws you in because of the intensity and the powerful songs that they are able to create. It's kind of like, you know how thrash bands yell Slayer every chance that they get? For prog fans, that's Meshuggah. So I guess you could kind of say that Meshuggah is like the Slayer of progressive metal because there's just such a devoted and just very niche and very dedicated fan base, and they're just such monster musicians. Meshuggah! If you haven't listened to Meshuggah already, then it's okay, no judgment. I would recommend Obzen because I was in high school when that record came out, uh, Chaos Sphere, as well as Destroy, Race, and Prove if you are a hipster. I'm just kidding, Destroy, Race, and Prove is just a freaking solid album, and you should definitely listen to it. Those three records kind of give you the sense of what the band is really about. They're one of the ambassadors of metal musicianship, and proving that metal has a lot more layers and dynamics than the stereotypical wall-to-wall -wall noise and the screeching vocals and stuff like that, even though that's in Meshuggah's sound, but there's a lot more layers and a lot more dynamics and depth to their overall sound. Now, Mashuka have always been a very popular band, but they got a massive boost in 2008 with Obzen, where the internet lost their collective minds when the song Bleed came out, which sparked a massive race online to see who can play it the cleanest, and the answer is, well, Thomas, of course. Duh. Their sound has been so influential, and it inspired another genre called Gent, and in a weird way, they changed the sound of prog forever, and it's very easy to fall into that trap of emulating their sound. It's kind of widely accepted that prog bands are taking heavy influences, uh, well, take a heavy influence to Meshuggah. It's like what Devin Townsend said, we all rip off Meshuggah. So the question that I have for this review is, how does Meshuggah stay ahead of a scene that is riddled with a ton of copycats? Well, let's find out. There's a lot to talk about with Immutable, especially their songwriting on this album, which is absolutely fearless. Meshuggah really challenged themselves by adding in a few new elements to keep things interesting on this release. Their rhythmically adventurous sound is very present throughout, but has several surprises that kept me entertained throughout. The surprises don't venture too far away from their sound. They're more subtle, but they work very well, especially in their instrumental track, They Move Below which starts off by having this haunting melodic line before it slowly builds into this heavy groove and you just get bludgeoned by the intensity of it. It just kind of crescendos, it kind of creeps in and then you just get this like huge wave of just bludgeoning riff after riff after riff and it's just, you're so engaged with the track and it's just an awesome, awesome break in the chaos, as much as you can get a break in the chaos with a Meshuggah record. Broken Cog is another example of this, but they have this kind of clean, chilling vocal style. There's been moments where they have experimented with these types of vocals in the past, but something felt really different about them in this song. And it's moments like these that kept me listening to this album again and again. Meshuggah! Now, when it comes to Meshuggah, they are the masters of groove, and this album has plenty of it. Even though the rhythms are complex, I was still invested in these songs because all the parts are very compelling and when they just command your attention. I think bands who try to emulate the styles can sometimes overthink the complexity where it just becomes noodle salad, but Meshuggah just knows how to make something that sounds heavy and arguably danceable. One section that stands out to me when it comes to the groove part of their songwriting has to be this one part in Phantoms, where the drums cut out and they just drop to one guitar and the sound of it just rattles your bones and before it just breaks into this like bass 
boosted like breakdown and it just sounds disgusting and mean. section doesn't get you amped up then nothing will and I think you probably should probably check your pulse because I think you're dead inside. The whole album just sounds chaotic and unsettling and it feels like you're going crazy and Immutable is just an album that sounds like the soundtrack to the apocalypse. I can't remember who said it but at one point maybe it was Thomas who said it or maybe it was another person who, re who reviewed a Meshuggah record but they said that Meshuggah doesn't have one drummer they have five and I would be inclined to agree with that because the percussive and rhythmic elements are crucial to their sound. And the way that they fill the space with the big open chords and soundscapes really add another dimension to these songs. Each really builds off of the initial rhythm that they present, but they manage to build a lot of suspense and drama with the sudden changes, like how they jump into the solo section with the simple shots of I Am That Thirst, also great riffs throughout that song, and how in the Armies of the Preposterous where they just jump from this tribal part into an earth-shattering breakdown, just when you think you couldn't get any heavier, they just manage to rip your head off. Now, I'm going to be a bit biased here and say that Thomas is one of my favorite drummers and that guy is just an absolute genius when it comes to technical playing, limb independence. I could do a whole entire review trying to break down his playing, but I'll summarize it like this. This guy is not human. If, and if I could play the drums half as good as him, I will die happy. I was air drumming nonstop, but trying to catch the backbeat of the drums, I'll admit I got lost several times when listening to it. Plus the fills that he does in the, um, in the abysmal eye are just like, we're not worthy. We're, oh, we're not, not worthy, worthy thing, man, because that guy is just a outstanding, outstanding drummer. And what I admire about Mashuka is that they don't get softer as they got popular. They stayed true to themselves and they doubled down on the heaviness. And there's moments on this album where I think they've gotten heavier, like in the song, Like the Shortening Fuse, which has this really wicked tribal groove that is played in unison. And it just hits you right in the chest. And also in Kaleidoscope, where there's just a simple groove by their standards and it just feels like you're getting crushed under the weight of the guitars. You guys just managed to mix an album that was just freaking awesome. It sounds a bit warmer than previous releases, but it just sounds very crisp and clean and the kick just hits you in the chest. The bass sounds nice and fat. The guitar tones are very punishing. All while Yen's vocals are piercing through all the intensity. I'm just, I'm blown away by this, man. Well done. So to answer my question, how do they stay ahead of the scene? Well, it's because they're the masters of that particular style of prog. And it just shows that they're able to make songs that are more relatable to people that, that are and aren't musically knowledgeable. Plus, they're willing to challenge themselves and expand on the sound that they built so many years ago. They built a legendary career, and the fact that they are still going as some of the members are starting to hit their 50s is really impressive. You pretty much know what you're going to get when picking up a Mashuga album, and that can be both a positive and a negative thing. You already know what's to be expected of them, and if you think that there's going to be a drastic change in their sound to appease another fan base, that's never going to happen. So if you are a fan of what Mashuga has already done, then you're easily going to be impressed with this album. But if you have been a bit ear fatigued of that sound being played by Meshuggah and by the students of Meshuggah, then you might be a little disappointed. While this album does have its familiar ideas and tones scattered throughout, that doesn't take away from the experience of Immutable. This band has created a sound that is uniquely theirs and has been emulated countless times. While there have been many students of Meshuggah, it is impossible to overthrow the masters, and that's what Meshuggah are. So with all that being said, unfortunately, it doesn't live up to the rest of Meshuggah's discography, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give this record a half skull out of five. No, I'm just kidding, it's a four and a half out of five. This album fucking rolls. It's April 1st. Actually, I think it's my dog's birthday, actually. So if you're watching Tango, happy eighth birthday. 
So here are a couple of albums that came out today. First up, we have Necrogoblicon with their new record, The Fundamental Slimes and Humor, which is their independent release. Next up, we have Satan with Earth Infernal, which is out on Metal Blade Records. And last, forgive me, I think I've butchered this band's name countless times. I think it's Kublai Khan or Kublai Khan, Kublai Khan, Michael Buble Khan. I don't know. Either way, they're a great band. Their new album, The Lowest Form of Animal, comes out today through Rise Records. Now, if you like Meshuggah, here's a couple of albums I know you'll absolutely love, and probably some of you already may know what these albums are. First up, I would recommend Animals as Leaders with the, one of their best records ever, The Joy of Motion, which came out on Sumerian Records. Next, I would also recommend Intervals with The Shape of Color. Now, if you're looking for a a mixture of Animals as Leaders as well as Intervals. Definitely check out Stefan Taranto with Permanence. Really awesome solo uh, prog, prog guitar player. And finally, I would recommend David Maxim Mikic with his breakthrough album. Well, one of many albums that were breakthrough. I mean, the guy is just a killer guitar player and it just puts out amazing songs. But this is my favorite, which is Who Bit the Moon? And it's an independent release. and. Be sure to check out all of those bands and those solo artists because it's just absolutely killer stuff. And if it wasn't for Mashuga, a lot of these bands would never come to fruition. So we owe it to Mashuga that they've influenced the next generation of prog bands that are putting out amazing music. So definitely check out those records if you haven't. And thank you so much everyone for watching. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out all of our reviews, our interviews, and I will see you soon to talk about another prog band. And also, uh, be sure to listen to uh, All Terrain. I got to interview Jeff Plate a couple months ago, so if you haven't checked it out, please go to our Patreon and check it out. Till next time, guys. See you soon.